Okay, so today we're going to take a look at capillary depth gauges and how they're calibrated. So even though these depth gauges tell you how deep you are, they're not actually telling you how deep you are. What they're doing in fact is they're telling you the pressure in which you are under, not the depth which you are at. We just know how to interpret that um, on the front of the gauge to give a depth reading as opposed to a pressure reading. Now this plays its part in altitude diving because if we were to measure the distance from the surface to where the diver is at, it would actually be less than what the gauge is reading. So even though this doesn't cause immediate problems because you know, you're know you not breaching a profile depth in that way, we do still need to understand this, which is what the altitude diver course is for. But what we're gonna do in this session is we're gonna tell you how these capillary depth gauges are calibrated so that hopefully you can understand why they may read slightly differently at altitude. So if you get ready, we'll get started. Okay, so a capillary depth gauge, how is it actually calibrated? Well, if we think of an upturned glass, open-ended, okay, so much like this, if we take this down in the water now, what's going to happen to the volume of gas inside of here is as the pressure increases, it's going to start to have an effect on the volume of gas that's inside. It's going to become more dense. It's going to shrink in size, okay? so. That's the concept of a capillary depth gauge, okay? It uses air as the medium in which to interpret the pressure. So it's air filled, much like the glass. Now, as you take that glass down in the water, what's gonna happen is the, the density of, of the gas is gonna increase. So it's gonna to squeeze together. It's gonna to get smaller and smaller. When we reach a point where the gas volume has halved inside there, that means we've doubled the pressure we should be familiar with this from open water course, okay? As we halve the volume, we double the pressure, or as we double the pressure, it halves the volume. So at this point, when the gas volume has halved, we know that is now double the surface pressure, okay? So at sea level, there is one atmosphere of pressure, okay? That's a constant. So for every 10 meters of depth in seawater, there is another atmosphere of pressure. So when we've doubled the pressure, we've halved the volume, it's now telling you at twice the surface pressure. So we put a mark on the gauge at this point here because we know that's the halfway point, okay? We've halved the volume, which means twice the pressure. If we continue, for example, we could get to a point where it's now one third the size. So what we've done there is we've tripled the pressure Okay, so it's another 10 meters of depth is going to take that to one third the, the gas volume size. So we've actually tripled the pressure. So at this point, there is three times the surface pressure. We can continue that on even further when we reach a point where it is one quarter the size of what it was at the surface. We know there is now four times the pressure at this point than there was at the surface. So what we're doing in effect here is we're using, um, we're using air and we, we know the rate of compression of that gas is in accordance with every 10 meters, there is one atmosphere of pressure. And what we're doing is we're putting marks on that glass in effect. When it reaches halfway down, we can say, there we go, that's double the pressure. Then when it reaches about a third the size, we can put another mark. Okay, so there's three times the pressure. And then again, when it's about a quarter, we can put a mark there and say that's four times the pressure. So it's an indicator of the pressure we're at. Now, because of the relationship, like I've said, of you know every 10 meters is one atmosphere of pressure, what we do on the gauge itself now, so where these marks are, instead of putting twice the pressure, three times the pressure, four times the pressure, what we do on the gauge itself is at this point we write that's 10 meters okay at this point here we write 20 because we're now at 20 meters at this point here we write 30 because we're at 30 meters and so on and so on we're using the known relationship between pressure and depth to indicate how deep we are 
But if you remember how we actually got these markings in the first place, it wasn't by measuring depth down, it was by looking at the pressure and measuring pressure. So the gauge is actually calibrated by measuring pressure compared to the surface. So it's twice the surface pressure, three times the surface pressure, four times the surface pressure, and so on. That is how it's calibrated. So this is what your gauge is actually telling you. It's telling you this information because it's far more valuable to the diver. It's not telling you this information. This is how it's actually calibrated. Now, where this, where this has an effect at altitude now is because this is calibrated to sea level. So remember that, that a capillary depth gauge is calibrated to sea level. So it's calibrated under these conditions, okay? So if we take this gauge, gauge to altitude now, for the sake of this exercise, let's assume altitude has a, an atmospheric pressure of 0 0.7. There's obviously a whole range in there, but for the sake of this, we need to pick one. So we'll just say the altitude at this dive begins at 0 0.7 atmospheres, which makes sense. The higher up we go, the less atmospheric pressure there is. So we take this gauge on our altitude dive. So again, we reach a point where when we take the gauge in the water, the pressure is going to start acting on it. When we reach a point where the gas volume has halved in size, what do we know is we've doubled the pressure. But what's the pressure at altitude, we've started from 0.7, not from 0.1. So to double the surface pressure, it means at this stage, when the gas volume is halved, the pressure we are actually under is double the surface pressure. So at this point, you're actually only under a pressure of 1.4 atmospheres. However, the gauge has been calibrated to think you're at two because it was calibrated at sea level. Therefore, the distance you actually are from where you are now to the surface is gonna be less because you've started from a place of less pressure. <clears throat> if we want to continue that same thing there, we get to a point where the gas volume inside the gauge is now one third the size it was as compared to the surface. Now, that's three times the pressure. But when you start from 0.7, three times that pressure is 2.1. So the pressure you're actually under at this point is you're under 2.1 atmospheres of pressure. However, the gauge has been calibrated to think you're at three atmospheres, which is obviously deeper. We haven't reached there yet. Same again, if we continue that down when it's a quarter the size, we're now under four times that atmospheric pressure, but when it begins at 0.7, that's actually only 2.8 atmospheres of pressure that you're under at this point. However, the gauge has been calibrated to think you're under four atmospheres of pressure, which is still a way down. So this is why if you dive with a capillary depth gauge at altitude, and you want to measure the distance from where you're at to the surface, it will be less than what your gauge is reading. Because your gauge is reading this, because it's been calibrated to assume this, but it doesn't take into account that you're diving at altitude and starting from a reduced surface pressure. So it throws the calibration off. This is why it's important to do altitude courses, so the Paddy Altitude Diver course. If diving at altitude is something that you do, you do regularly or you plan on doing, just so you can make those calculations and understand how deep you actually are, because it can then affect things like no decompression time, etc., and safety stops that are required. Um, although you should never actually breach a profile because you're shallower than what your gauge is telling you, it's still good to understand what the conditions are that you're actually under. Also, if you do want to maximize that dive, you could be cutting yourself short of time underwater. So it pays to understand this so that you can enjoy you know, your altitude diving in the future.